I worked for the Ontario provincial government at the Ministry of Environment Laboratories, which are located in Rexdale, Ontario, along the 401 near Islington Avenue. Okay. <clears throat> I started there in 1969 uh, in the microbiology department. And uh, because I, I took biology and some microbiology in university, and then took further courses in microbiology at University of Toronto, at the School of Hygiene. And I worked with the Ministry of Environment Laboratories in Toronto from 1969 until 1998 when I retired. Okay, and uh, basically, uh, well, near the end of my career, I was the head of one particular laboratory unit in the laboratory branch. I worked after that, after I retired from the Ontario government, I was asked to help out in the germ region in, at a laboratory in Pickering and head that microbiology laboratory while a person was away on sabbatical. And I did that for a year. And then also I helped a laboratory in London. I was hired by a laboratory in London after that to, actually before that, and I took a, a break from the laboratory in London to help out the people in Pickering and then went back to the laboratory in London after helping the people in Pickering and basically helped them set up their, in, in, micro, in the microbiology area, I helped them set up their uh, quality control program so they could get accreditation for all of their methodologies. And so I also have experience in statistical analysis, etc., etc. And then I slowly, I, I did that, well, along with a lady from that laboratory in London, I did that and then slowly stepped back and I transferred the information and, and got the people in the laboratory trained to maintain the quality control program and then stepped back slowly to let the younger people take over. Okay? And I'm still, I still have a, basically a contract with them but I do it only as required. Okay. Otherwise, I'm retired. So, so the the Pickering Lab um, mm -hmm. was that a, a? It was called the Germ Regional Laboratory okay. in Pickering. Oh, okay, and and was that? Um, Again, it was to do with uh, environmental uh, analyses, um, predominantly drinking water analyses for the region of Durham. Was it actually York Andrew, region of York Andrew. So you tested water basic, drinking water. Well, I, we, well, at the laboratories in Toronto, um, our microbiology de you know, department tested surface water, like lake water, river water, stream water, all along the Great Lakes, um, inland lakes, soil, air, and even some industrial waste and sewage from sewage treatment facilities. And it all had to do with um, assessment and um, basically analyzing those particular elements for bacteria related to either industrial pollution and or um, human indicators of fecal material, okay? bacteria indicating fecal material, coliform, E. coli, etc., etc. So contamination, basically. Contamination, yeah. Basically. So it, um, because I had thought I saw a reference to a name that's similar to yours to do with the, I'll say, infamous occurrences uh, at Walkerton. Yes, you were. I was. I did provide information to the Walker Inquiry. I did not have to go up there personally, but I did provide information for them. And that had to do when I was working with the laboratory in London, Ontario, because they had been analyzing drinking water for the Walkerton uh, uh, distribution system, water drinking water distribution system for a number of years. And my boss at the laboratory in London did go up and help to clear up the system 
and also went to the Walker to inquiry to provide information. Okay. So that's... I'm just asking because I, I just want to understand this because that's actually how when I, when I, I've, I read some of your uh, statements, uh, comments and stuff on the newspaper and then I was like, okay, uh, you obviously have a, a certain method that I recognize maybe as a scientific it's, method. It's, of, it's basically a scientific approach, if you will, to try and be quite logical. Analytical. Okay. Analytical and yeah. logical. Yeah. So, um, and I, and I thought, because some of the dates I'm not sure about, that the, the Walkerton incident happened when in uh, 2000, 2001 or 2000, 1999? I can't remember off the top of my head. And I, and I had... It would be in that area of time, yeah. Okay, and, and you were working for the Ministry of the Environment. Until um, 1998, that's when I retired. Oh, okay. I retired in 1998. And I had read Walkerton. something there about um, someone who went off to make a lab and and he had uh, brought people like the, it, in other words the the current the current government when Walkerton happened was mm -hmm. who um, when Walkerton occurred I believe it was under Harris Mike Harris Mike Harris okay, okay. Um, Harris took over in 1995. The Conservative government took over in 1995. <clears throat> and when it did, it started to downsize government agencies, departments, and ministries, including Natural Resources, Ministry of Environment. And it had been approached on a number of occasions by private laboratories around the province who wanted to obtain the work that we were doing at the Ministry of Environment, uh, drinking water testing and, and other testing. And the Harris government uh, made a decision and it told the Ministry of Environment laboratories not to test drinking water any longer for municipalities. Okay? It didn't tell the municipalities that they had to go to private laboratories or that the private laboratories would take over. It basically said we would stop. Okay, so then the municipalities had a choice. They could set up their own laboratories in house at their own expense with all the capital costs and hiring people, or they could go to the private sector. Well, it was easier to go to the private sector. And um, at that time, they, the Harris government cut our laboratory in Toronto by 40%. From 220 people down to about 120 people. Those are thus basically scientists they're cutting off. Oh yeah, yeah. And well, scientists and engineers and all kinds of other stuff. But in our laboratory alone, they cut our laboratory by 40 percent. And they also we had four laboratories around the province before that. We had the main laboratory in Toronto where I worked. We had a laboratory in Kingston, Ontario, London, Ontario, and Thunder Bay, Ontario. And the Harris government closed all three of the, outs, the laboratories outside of Toronto, kept open only the laboratory in Toronto, and cut its staff by 40%. Okay? Some and then some, shortly thereafter, yeah. Walkerton took place. When the Ministry of Environment closed the laboratory in London, Ontario, the Ministry of Environment laboratory in London, Ontario, had been testing the drinking water in that area, including Walkerton's drinking water. And when the Ontario government under Harris closed the laboratory in London, the fellow who was head of microbiology started his own laboratory, private laboratory. And he took over testing the water from Walkerton. Okay. Uh, shortly thereafter, within a, a year or two thereafter, he was having trouble with his laboratory because he was getting a lot of competition from the bigger laboratories who were undercutting the pricing in order to get all the work. So he bowed out, told Walkerton that he could no longer do that testing for them and other municipalities in the area, in the London area, and uh, or that part of the province. And he found a laboratory that would, in London, a private laboratory that would do the testing. It was called A&L Laboratories, I believe. 
and they started doing the, water, the, the drinking water testing for Walkerton. It was that laboratory that found the E. coli in the drinking water samples. And that happened, oh, within months after the laboratory I work for stopped doing the drinking water testing for Walkerton. Okay. And it was that laboratory, it was a private laboratory. Now part of the problem was that when the private laboratories took over, who were not related to the Ministry of Environment, they had a policy of only dealing with their customers and when they analyzed drinking water for their customers, such as Walkerton, they had a, a policy that they would only inform the drinking water staff at the municipality if there was evidence of fecal contamination, but they would not inform the local medical officer of health, and they would not inform the Ministry of Environment Lab, or um, um, uh, yeah, the Ministry of Environment local office, which was a Nolan Sound for Walkerton. And they, th they said, no, this is privileged information between our customer and ourselves at the laboratories. And so they informed the Cable Brothers in Walkerton, and the Cable Brothers basically went out and tried to flush the system to get rid of everything, and it didn't work properly. Nobody informed the Medical Officer of Health, nobody informed the Ministry of Environment, who would have stepped in had they been informed. And so, by the, because of all the delay, the medical officer of health found out that there was a problem when somebody reported to him that people in a, in a nursing home were coming down ill. And he said, what's going on? Well, that, was, uh, that took a number of days at least before that occurred. You know, when, when the Harris government started to downsize and cut out our laboratories, and people were claiming that it was too costly, you know, that it should go to the private sector, the private sector would do it much more efficiently, more effectively, more cheaply. I said, I don't think so. I don't think it would be a good idea. Um, of course, the Harris government didn't listen. They were bound and determined they were going to offload and, and to save money. And basically, you know, put the burden on the municipalities. And so I, I did write all kinds of memos and letters and or memos to our policy branch saying it was not a good idea. I didn't think that would be a good idea, but um, the Harris government had its vision, okay? And it was bound to determine that that's what it was going to do to save money for the provincial government. So, so it basically um, downloaded all the costs to the municipalities. But you were you uh, actually testified, I, I believe. And I didn't testify. I provided some information. Okay. Well, that's to right. To the. That's right. A, docu Harvey. a document was it or? A... I can't remember exactly. It was. Um, and in it, you, well, you were... I, I, I provided a number of things, which I gave to Gary Palmatier, who was the head of the laboratory, and he's the one that started the other lab. He started his own private laboratory when the Ministry of Environment Laboratory in London closed. And did you go over there and work with and him? And that's who I was working with right. at the time. Then and he decided he could no longer do the work. It was He was being undercut by the larger laboratories. And then he passed the work on to a &L Laboratory and told the municipalities that a &L would be willing to do the work for them. So when the Walkerton incident took place, then not only Gary Pompatier was involved, but I got involved because I provided some information with regard to, you know, the amounts of testing that should be done, statistical analysis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Were you concerned about the amount of testing? In other words, your professionalism. What I was concerned in? about private laboratories doing the testing for a number of reasons. One, they had a policy that they would only inform their clients and if anything went wrong they would only inform their clients. I didn't like that. And also, when the changes were being proposed and when finally they, they, the work did go to private laboratories, I got calls from a number of private laboratories around the Toronto area asking me how to do the methods. Right? Now, this is not good. They're asking me how to do the methods. And I thought, well, holy crow, if, 
You're asking me how to do the methods. They wanted our methods. They wanted to know how to perform the methods for testing and whether they were using the right methods. And I got really nervous and I went around to a number of different laboratories to check out their sites, private laboratories, to see what they were doing. And it turned out they were sometimes using the wrong method, sometimes using very insensitive methods, and sometimes using methods incorrectly. And I had to basically inform them about how to change. And I thought, well, I better do this because otherwise they're going to be doing the testing and they won't know what the heck they're doing unless they do it properly. And I was worried that it could lead to a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> Now that didn't end up at the Warkard Inquiry. I mean, that wasn't part of the information that was sent to the Warkard Inquiry.